Our campus is designed to reflect an ahupua'a, where water flows downhill from the top of the property towards the ocean. And that's by design and also to reflect the spiritual nature of this, this ahupua'a that we occupy. We're mostly outside. I mean, you have gardens, you have ponds, you have tide pools, you have mini oceans for the sharks. <laughs> um, we just have tanks and gardens everywhere. And we just, because we're trying to recreate what nature has created on campus so we can have animals and plants thrive in our experiments. Aloha Kai is an environmental tour education program where our students are docents and we host school children from across the state. I chose Wea because I came on a tour when I was in fourth grade, I think, and it was at the old campus that we had down the road, and it was definitely what I was looking for because I used to go to a school that was like, you're at a desk all the time, and it was like, it wasn't how I learned the best. So here, it's like, you get to choose what you really want to do. The purpose of Wea is to provide students choice and control over their own education, and what that does is it, it, it taps an intrinsic level of their own motivation. Um, one of our seniors that graduated previously, he had the idea of, I want to make a printer that's going to be really accurate, it's going to be stable, it's going to be able to stay on the team once I leave. And he created, he completely designed and built his own 3D printer. And this is actually, he named it Sudoshi after his grandfather. The benefits of having a 3D printer, at least on our project, is we have the ability to print actual custom-made parts for our robots. So since we do live in Hawaii, it's such, the shipping is a pain and it takes a very long time. And we only have six weeks to build our robots. And actually, if pieces don't exist anywhere, we have the ability to CAD it, which is computer-aided design, and we use a program called Autodesk Professional. And um, essentially, what you can do is you can create your own items all together. One of our students designed this piece for our upcoming build season. What it is, is it's a slider for a piece of extrusion. This piece didn't exist anywhere, and we really needed it for a robot, because this year's game, you had to pick up that yellow tote. So um, on the arms, this needed to move up and down, so we needed a piece to actually do that, so this gave us the ability to do that, and we printed it. Um, I'm head of business and PR, so I gained the experience of writing grants and stuff like that, so I've gotten at least $30,000 worth of grants for our school. They received funding to buy a commercial grade 3D printer. So that 3D printer is the one that they're now using to fabricate uh, prosthetic hands. They were getting good at using the 3D printer, and a third student, uh, Ben Perel, stumbled on the idea of joining this organization that hooks up people that have 3D printers with people that have need for prosthetic limbs, mostly hands, and a lot of times children. It's amazing to know that high school students are making such a huge impact on someone's life. Like we just gave a three-year-old girl in Oahu two hands that she was born with a condition called syndactyly, which is where her fingers are webbed together. So she wasn't, she didn't have the ability to grip or grab things. So we gave her the ability with our 3D printers to grip and grab things. And like the reaction that we got from her and her mom when we first gave her the hand was definitely, it was amazing. I mean, that's just magic. You can't really engineer stuff like that. Um, you, you can't make stuff like that happen in a classroom based setting, only in this kind of setting where there's, you know, student buy-in, student choice, student control, and students, frankly, driving their own learning. The longer you stay at Wea, the more you get to be, you get the freedom of deciding more on what you want to do, because we have a few projects that are set. But um, we'll go, you'll decide what you want to research on. So you'll do research, you'll study it, and then you'll come up with a project proposal, and which has a uh, problem statement hypothesis, uh, not the conclusions quite yet, of course, but the um, materials and timeline and things like that. And then you'll go up and we have a little like, auditorium sort of thing, it's called Kapiko. Um, we'll stand down in the middle and then we'll present the projects with microphones and say like all those different things, parts will be spread out. So we have to present information to students, teachers, and just a variety of people. Another student that comes to mind is the reason we have the shark lagoon today, because she came to school one day and said, I'm going to have a shark. And we were like, ah, oh, we don't have sharks here. And so she showed up Monday morning and she started to set it up and didn't tell us. And so there were her and these two other boys were setting it up and they started to fill it with salt water. And we all came on and we're, hey, wait a minute, what are you guys doing? And then they said, oh, we're going to have our shark in here. So we were like, okay, okay. This, we, we thought to ourselves that this is going to fall on its face. Well, about a week after they had set this up, 
she, we come to school and there's a stingray inside the tank. And then somebody came and she was talking to that person about stingrays and the guy happened to be an aquarium scientist. And he said, I can get you a hammerhead shark, no problem. So then about a month later, we got a shipment of a hammerhead shark in a black tank through Aloha Airlines and we had a shark. And it was because of that student. I think that's the magic of education that's really missing by standardized test-driven, you know, regular classroom traditional approaches.